بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So this video is a kind of extension to the course that we did uh, in which we covered Al Aqida Al Wasidiyah by Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala and then after that we covered tafsir of Surah Al Hujurat and in this video inshallah ta'ala we had a number of questions that were left over that we weren't able to complete before the time expired and, the, and we, we ran out of time in the class so we promised that we would try our best to record them and to broadcast them out to everybody inshallah ta'ala and so that is what we are doing First question, is it better to abstain from sin out of fear of Allah or being shy from Allah? I don't think there is a contradiction between those two things. I don't think a person has a choice where they say that I'm going to choose whether to abstain from this sin out of fear or out of shyness. Rather, the more you increase in shyness of Allah, the more your iman increases. And the more you increase in fear of Allah, the more your iman increases, providing that fear doesn't lead you to despair and providing that that shyness doesn't lead you to uh, not asking Allah or being too shy to ask Allah or being too shy to worship Allah. So as long as the shyness and the fear are within the limits, I don't think there's a contradiction between those things. You push the shyness as much as you can within the limits and you push the fear as much as you can within the limits and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Is it okay to read translation of Quran or tafsir, or tafsir of the Quran in English without reading the original Quran in Arabic first? I would suggest that you should distinguish between reciting the Quran and studying the Quran. Those two are separate ibadat uh, to a certain extent, even though there may be some overlap. They are separate ibadat. So when you read the Quran in English, you're not reciting the Quran you are simply studying the meanings of the Qur'an, like a tafsir. So what we would say about that is that if these two are both considered to be separate issues, then they exist independently of each other. You should be reciting the Qur'an as much as you can, uh, and you should also be understanding and studying the Qur'an as much as you can, and those two are independent of each other. It's not that one necessarily follows the other or one necessarily comes before the other uh, you recite the Quran as a separate ibadah and then your study of the Quran is also uh, is also separate uh, in terms of which one should be given some pre preference and priority you need to know enough of the Quran in English to be able to act upon the basic rules and regulations that's the most important thing um, but I, I don't think that it's a big contradiction and I think most people can comfortably do both and Allah will Next question, would you recommend the tafsir of al Maududi translated into English? No, I, I wouldn't recommend that tafsir. Uh, and I'm not going to say it's called Tafheem al-Quran, I'm not going to say that there is no good in it from beginning to end and there is no point of benefit from beginning to end. But it's not a tafsir that was written upon the Sunnah. It's not a tafsir that was written with the proper belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Uh, and then for that reason, I would not recommend that when you have many, many, mashallah, beautiful tafsir. You have the translation of Muhsin Khan, you have Sahih International, and if you go up, you have the tafsir of Imam Sa'di, you have uh, tafsir of Kathir. I don't think you need uh, to be to be reading uh, tafheem of Quran, and Allah Azza wa knows best. Advice to those learning Arabic and comprehension, your Arab and comprehension. So my advice to people learning Arabic is that Arabic is actually made up of parts. Um, a part of Arabic is what you might call, in a technical sense, ilmu ma'ani, but we're just going to call it vocabulary, mufradat, just learning vocab. And this is something anyone can do, even if you don't have your teacher with you, you know, just to get a collection of vocab, you learn five words a day, learn ten words a day, it's beautiful, it's easy for everybody to do, even for little children to do. 
You could start them with words, you know, around the house, chair, desk, you know, like pen, paper, door. These little words. And they're not learning sentences, but they're at least learning some words that they can understand. And if those words come in the Quran, that's even better. Uh, so that's one thing, vocab. The second thing that we would recommend is that you learn some kind of grammar. And there are lots of books that are written on Arabic grammar. You could go classical and go with something like uh, al ajrumiya um, Before that, you could do something more simple. Uh, we have the Medina books, and we have you know all of these other Arabic al Arabiya day, and all these other little books that are out there. And indeed, many teachers have their own unique books that are totally unique to them. Um, Arabic grammar is, is 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 not that difficult. But where we come now, you've got vocab and you've got grammar. The third thing is what I believe to be the most important, and that is what we call exposure to the language. Some people call it corpus learning, which is that you get as much exposure to those words and to that grammar as possible. Classical texts, the Quran, the Sunnah, uh, you get exposure to it through listening, through watching, through reading. Uh, children's books are amazing. You know, go and get the little books for little children that are for, for, for little Arab children.